Let me tell you a secret. The way restaurant owners have been told to use Instagram is a scam. Because a lot of the Instagram consultants trying to help your restaurant get views on reels or telling you to post every day for the sake of consistency or telling you to boost posts are just wasting your time and money and trying to sell you something. The numbers that I've seen across thousands of restaurants prove that, which we'll get into later. Which is why in this video, I'll be sharing the three Instagram growth strategies that'll actually drive sales for your restaurant Starting with number one, the best paid strategy, retargeting, which always is the best way to increase sales on Instagram. Yes, retargeting sounds like a big fancy word, but it's exactly what it sounds like. Targeting a certain customer with an Instagram ad to try and convince them to spend money at your restaurant, but only doing it after they've almost placed an order. That's why it's retargeting. To make this easier to understand, let's imagine a customer named Sally. It's 8 p.m. on Tuesday night, and Sally hasn't had dinner yet. She's hungry for some great, comforting Italian food. That's exactly what you sell at your restaurant. Sally starts scrolling on her phone, she does a Google search, and she finds your website. She clicks into your online ordering. It's great so far. She starts placing an order. She adds the chicken Alfredo into her cart, and she's about ready to type in her cart details when her boyfriend comes in the door and says, Sally, I brought Chinese takeout home, and ruins everything. But it doesn't have to be ruined, because imagine you have a fixed marketing budget every month. Would you rather spend that money trying to convince an entirely new customer, or what if you could just gently remind Sally that that chicken Alfredo dish still exists? and you could have it on Wednesday instead. With retargeting, you can. All you do is you put a Facebook pixel on your online ordering site. The pixel is a product by Facebook which collects info on every website visitor on your website. And then it figures out their Instagram and Facebook accounts. Then it lets you target them with ads. So the magic of retargeting versus doing boosted posts or other Facebook ads is that it's much cheaper and it helps you stay top of mind with people that are the most likely to order. Because the people we're retargeting are the people who already know your restaurant. They've already visited your website. They've already, in some cases like Sally, started placing their order and then for whatever reason, they didn't make it through the checkout process. You're probably wondering, are there really a lot of these people? Surprisingly, yes. I didn't think so either until I saw the numbers behind restaurants' online ordering systems. But here are the facts. The very best online ordering systems only convert 20 out of every 100 people who visit an online ordering system into an online order. That means that the other 80 out of 100 spend some time on the online ordering system, are interested in ordering food from you, but in many cases get distracted or change their mind. Not because they suddenly hate the restaurant they almost ordered from, but because life gets in the way. Like Sally's boyfriend bringing home Chinese takeout. Our other example customer, Marco, who is being interrupted by a phone call, which makes him forget that he almost placed that order. So if we can get back in front of Sally, or Marco, or the hundreds of people every month that they represent, then we can convert them into sales. You've probably had this experience on Instagram where it feels like you're being stalked because you visited an online shopping website where you almost bought an item from an online store and then didn't complete checkout for whatever reason. And then for the next month, the stalking begins because you constantly see advertisements for that product. There's a reason all these brands stalk you, and it's because it's the top sales driver that they use to drive new customers, to drive new sales. But most Facebook ad gurus that are telling restaurants about how to use Instagram don't tell them about this because it ends up saving so much time and so much money that they don't actually need the consultant anymore. So after we've got that Facebook pixel set up on the online ordering system to enable retargeting across Instagram and Facebook, of people who almost placed that order. Now we go into our Facebook ads manager account, which is the place where you set up ads for Instagram and Facebook. And we create a simple ad. For the audience, we just select people who spent over one minute on our website, but didn't actually place an online order with us. My friend Chris, the owner of Brooklyn Pizza in Short Hills, is a perfect example of this strategy because he's used it to drive 70 new orders per month and over $3,000 in sales with less than $500 in ads spend. The first thing he set up was the targeting. He retargeted people who visited his website but didn't actually place an online order with him. And he showed them this Facebook ad, which I'll put on screen for you, so that you can see what I'm talking about. 
I'm about to explain why it is that this ad on screen works. But before I do, if you are liking this video so far and want more videos on growing your restaurant, then make sure to click that subscribe down below so that you can keep learning about growing a restaurant as I do. Every month on this channel, I post a few new videos based on what I've seen work best to increase restaurant sales. So why does it work, Adam? Part of the reason it works is that it's only being served to retargeting audiences. That means that Chris is showing this ad to people who had visited his website, but didn't place an online order. And the other key part of the reason this works is the way the ad itself is written. Because as you can see, in just a few sentences, Chris is reminding people of what makes Brooklyn pizza different and better. He says things like, Brooklyn pizza is committed to Brooklyn style cooking with fresh ingredients and great taste. As they're creative, meaning the part of the ad which isn't text, they use a gallery of photos, which are showing off the most popular dishes on their menu so that people can can eat with their eyes, so powerful in restaurants. One other thing I'll call out is how key it is that they're using emojis strategically. Who would have thought that emojis could be strategic? But in Facebook ads, because emojis make it easier to skim and easier to read through each line and give people visual cues of what it's talking about, it creates more engagement, which drives that ad performance to do better and engages customers more with the content. You may be wondering, this ad is awesome, Adam, so why not just run it to a bigger audience? Why only show it to people who have already visited our website but didn't order? The short answer there is that you can get over $6 in sales on average for every $1 you spend with this type of ad, just like Chris did, if you keep the audience just on retargeting. Because the way Facebook prices advertisements is they charge you for every thousand people that they show the ad to. They're charging you about $20 for every thousand impressions you generate. So you get to choose of the thousand impressions that you're going to pay $20 for, do you want those impressions to go to people that already know your restaurant and almost bought from you? Or do you want them to go to complete strangers? Because if we've got a fixed marketing budget, it is in our best interest to ensure that that marketing budget is used on the people that have the highest likelihood to convert. Our goal isn't to get as much exposure to people as possible. Our goal is to drive as much in sales with the least spend possible, which is where retargeting is so powerful because these people already have that deep familiarity with our brand that comes from having spent time on our website, almost placing an order online ordering system. You'll notice I kicked this off with a paid Instagram strategy right away. That's because although many people will tell you to focus on the free strategies for Instagram, like posting every day, those free strategies can be really hard to do well and actually get return on the investment from. They take huge amounts of time every day. And that isn't practical for busy restaurant owners to spend hours every day figuring out what pictures to take in the restaurant, actually edit them and how to caption them, which doesn't actually drive sales for restaurants because most people on Instagram are there to be entertained. They're not there to look for restaurants to buy from. There's an exception to this, which we'll get into later in the video, but that is why this idea that the way you succeed on Instagram is through constantly posting is just false. Organic strategies can get you impressions and likes. And I'll mention a few in this video, but likes can't pay your rent. What does? Actual sales. So it's critical that the strategies we focus on actually drive sales. So we've established that retargeting can make restaurants a lot of money when done properly. But there's one crucial mistake that restaurants sometimes make, and that mistake is not having an optimized profile. Just like a website needs to be optimized for conversion, so does an Instagram profile. Because investing time into bringing people to your Instagram page without having an optimized profile would be like trying to sell your house and having beautiful photography on Zillow, an incredible curb appeal with the lawn perfectly manicured. But then when people walk into the open house, having them see graffiti in the kitchen and dog poop, it just kills the deal for the people that actually step into the house and want to learn more. Some customers will actually click into the restaurant's Instagram profile and ask themselves questions. And within seconds, they're gonna be making judgments about whether they're going to order from this place. They'll be asking themselves things like, what's most popular on this restaurant's menu? Or what are this restaurant's hours? Or even crazy young people like me, does this restaurant have good vibes? And that question can be quickly answered with an optimized profile. The first common mistake I see is not using the profile description in the right way. Because in that 
profile description, we need to quickly have the following things addressed in the customer's mind. The type of cuisine, the differentiating factors, the website, and the call to action. My friend Omar, the owner of Talk and Tacos in Miramar, Florida, is a perfect example of Instagram optimization done right. Because at this point, he's driving over 100 new customers per month from Instagram, like clockwork, both with the paid strategies and with organic strategies. And a huge part of how he's been able to do that is ensuring that when people click in to his Talk and Tacos page, that they're quickly able to answer those questions that are going on in their mind. So I'll put up his profile on screen so that you can see what I mean. First line, it's halal Mexican food. Second line, they share their most popular dish by saying home of the birria tacos. Third line of that description, they call out a local partnership that makes it clear that they're a member of their community, partner of the Miami Dolphins. I've also seen restaurants that don't want to splurge on a big partnership like that, talk about their cuisine type in their community. Like my friend Antoinette from Otavio's, who says this is a concept with our family's recipes from Italy brought to Lakeside, California. California. And then directly underneath this, they do a call to action. They're trying to tell the customer what the next step is to take in placing that order. So they say things like order from our app for 20% off your first order. Then they do story highlights. You can think of story highlights as your restaurant's greatest hit highlight reels, like a movie trailer where the way movies grab the audience's attention is they show them all of the best parts of the movie compiled where quickly they're helping people determine whether they want to watch that movie by answering questions they have about what it's about. Because when customers are discovering a restaurant on Instagram, they've got questions that are on their mind. Questions like, what are the hours of this place? Which is why Talk and Tacos' first highlight is the hours highlight. Another common question for customers considering buying from this place are what the most popular dishes are on the menu, which is why the second highlight on Talk and Tacos, shout out Omar and Mo, the owners, is the best dishes on the menu that they have. Then other things that they've got going are community events, sharing the local charities that, that they're in partnership with, as well as an ordering tab, which helps people clearly see why to order directly from that restaurant rather than ordering from DoorDash or Uber Eats. They're training the customer through these highlights what to think about when they think of Talk and Tacos. This is important, by the way, even if we're only doing the retargeting strategy, because sometimes customers click into the profile that is serving them the retargeting ad and then make fast decisions about whether to go to this restaurant based on those highlights as we discussed. So now that we've got retargeting ads set up and our profile optimized, that brings us to the next strategy, strategy number three, which is how to post content that does well on Instagram for actually attracting new customers. And we should go back to Talk and Tacos for this because they are masterful in the way they execute Instagram. They've attracted over a hundred 10,000 followers over the past three years and are quite good at driving new customers from it. I know this because I've seen their numbers and I see that they get 50 new customers every month from Instagram for free and 3,000 impressions per post and 400 likes per post. Omar estimates that Instagram gets him in front of 90,000 extra people per month many of which are local customers. You may have remembered a few minutes ago that I just said likes don't pay the bills, impressions don't pay the bills, so why am I telling you these things? Well, in Omar's case, he gets both because his numbers prove that last month, he drove an extra $14,000 in online sales just through Instagram. He has a specific Instagram strategy that consists of two parts. The first part is the frequency of posting. He posts a lot and he's trained his managers to do the same. The second part of what he does is related to aesthetic or or as the young Gen Z folk say, vibe. Vibe is important for appealing not just to young people, but to all people. Because as we know in restaurants, people love to eat with their eyes. So it's no surprise how colorful the Talk and Tacos Instagram page is. Each picture of their food and video, this same food porn like style. The saturation is dialed way up so the colors pop. And if you look at the top performing restaurant pages on Instagram, you'll notice something pretty weird, which is that they all seem to be edited using the exact same editing style. And that's because that editing style has been tested time and time again and is proven to lead to the highest engagement. And engagement on a post is how Instagram decides whether it's going to show that post to people on their explore pages or under geotags, which we'll cover in a moment. And it is that explore pages and geotags which lead to new customer discovery versus just showing the same posts to the same followers of any Instagram page. 
The most successful type of filters that I have seen are the yummy filters in the Foodie app, which apply best to high quality photos that you want to look extra craveable. You can scroll through them and preview them on the app. This video is not sponsored by Foodie, but I'm a huge fan because I've seen a lot of restaurants use it successfully. So here are some examples of food pictures editing with Foodie, which is a pretty cheap app that any restaurant can download. This is the preset yummy filter, which achieves this aesthetic before and after. And here's the preset barbecue filter. If you've got a barbecue type of restaurant before and after. If you want to get advanced and edit like the top Instagram pages, they tend to apply these settings manually with images in their editing app to make sure they look as delicious as possible. They turn brightness up about 10 points. They turn contrast up about 15 points. They turn saturation up about 18 points and they increase warmth about seven points. This brings us to the next strategy related to posting, which is don't be spammy with your posts. You want to be careful that not every Every post feels like you're begging your customers to please order your food with a strong call to action in the description because that is not what creates entertaining, engaging content for people that are on Instagram. So how do we accomplish this? We do it by creating posts that are also about your brand, your story, and your team, but that are simultaneously entertaining. I have to use Talkin' Tacos as an example again. They're not a sponsor, but I've just learned a lot from what they do, so I insist. One video that they posted, it comes to mind because they went viral for it where they filmed their kitchen team dancing to Mexican music in the kitchen. Look at those moves. <laughs> I don't just mean the dance moves. I mean the branding moves. This is branding genius because it shows the spirit of Talkin' Tacos, which is a fun-loving brand where the kitchen team has great energy as they make the food. And that makes customers fall that much more in love with what it is that they're doing. But if you look at the comments, you'll notice that they're building a cult-like fan base. People are talking about how this is an awesome restaurant. And some people are even wanting to work for them, which is pretty awesome in this labor market. Which brings us to our next posting strategy related to driving new customers from organic posts using geotags strategically. Geotags sound like a very technical term, but are a very simple idea. So as fun as Omar's Instagram sounds so far with the dancing videos and the beautiful looking food, you may have noticed a problem, which is that Instagram is global meaning that usually posts get shown to people all around the world. And as a restaurant owner in South Florida, who cares if people in Dubai like his dancing kitchen videos if they're not actually going to become customers? So that brings us to the next part of this video, how we can use geotags strategically to ensure that our content is shown to the right people in the right location that can actually become customers of our restaurant. Geotags are the location setting on a post on Instagram, and they show you you where it was posted from. It may seem kind of a generic tool, like shouldn't you just put your restaurant's location in there every time? The answer is no. Geotags are a huge missed opportunity if you just put your restaurant as the location every time because the only people that tag will reach are people that already know your restaurant's name and location, which is why they're searching for your restaurant. But a way to use it to drive new customer discovery of people that are looking for things to do in your city or on your street is to tag those things in the food pictures you post. Because some people, especially young people, search their their city on Instagram to figure out fun stuff to do or the street name that they're on to see what there is in the area. And if they see delicious pictures of your food there or videos of your team dancing while they make your food, it can lead to new customer discovery because those people are in your area looking for things to do. So you geotag a post with your city name and it gets high engagement. Then with that high engagement, it stays pinned to the top of that geotag for a while. So that anybody that is looking for things to do, see those first nine posts at the top. And that is how it results in new customers. My friend, Steven, the owner of Planta in Miami, does this brilliantly on his Instagram because rather than tagging every post Planta South Beach as the location, he and his team tag some with the street name, Commerce Street, and some with the location, the city of South Beach, Miami, and so on. So if you look at his profile and those geotags, his pictures and his videos are often the ones that are pinned to the very top for these tourist destinations, which drive new customer discovery from people that are nearby looking for cool things to do in the area or accounts to follow. There's actually a way to measure how many new followers and profile visits 
as each post drives. And to use that to get better at creating content for your audience because it proves to you what is actually working versus what is not. To do that, you click into the insights tab at the bottom of any Instagram post, and that tells you how many new followers it drove and how many profile visits it drove. But the problem that you're probably thinking to yourself is how much in sales did the post drive? How do we figure that out? If you wanna see how many new customers you're getting from Instagram in total, there's a technology that makes it so that you can track not only the new customers, but how much in sales they drove straight from Instagram. I know because we built it. We were tired of hearing from restaurant owners about how frustrating it was to not even know if their time and money that was being spent on Instagram was actually working. So we built the technology that sits on that restaurant's website and counts exactly how many new orders and exactly how much in sales they're driving based on where the customer is finding that restaurant from, including on Instagram. If they click from the Instagram app, we can track that and we can show you exactly how many new orders you're doing from Instagram each month versus Google versus Facebook versus Yelp, as well as other growth channels. What we found is shocking. Instagram can be somewhat helpful if it's executed perfectly, like Mo from Talkin' Tacos does, but it's not the best way to get new customers online because most people are on social media to be entertained. There's another channel though, that people aren't there to be entertained. They're there to find restaurants to buy from, and that's Google. It's literally 10 times better across the board for restaurants all across the country at getting new customers. All of the numbers from the thousands of restaurants that I've seen prove that definitively. So if you're really ready to take your marketing to the next level, then check out this video next. I'll put it to the right of me so that you can just click in there and see how this strategy is used by hundreds of restaurants that I personally know of to drive over $10,000 per month in additional sales.